Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Richard Walsh. He's a strategic coach. He's got a military background. He teaches clients how to use their use physical fitness, their mindset to improve their strategic coaching, their vision, and overall performance. And I'm really happy to have him on the show to inspire, educate the audience. So Richard, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Great to be here. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you start off by introducing yourself, what you do, and I'm really excited to delve into the conversation about your company. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I've been in business uh, 30-ish years, 35 maybe, uh, coming out of the Marine Corps back in 87. I started the business working for myself, got all that figured out and did pretty good for 20 years, did really, really good. Uh, it was the best of what I did. And Things were going awesome till uh, 08, 09 hit, then everything collapsed, and I collapsed with it. I lost everything. I lost my home, my business. I had six little kids at the time, uh, so we had to kind of restart, you know, reprime the pump, so to speak, get going in a whole different direction, uh, yeah. and we did. We scaled a couple of new businesses, started doing really well, even after losing everything, and then people started asking me how I did it, and that whole thing began the mentoring process. Well, I did this and I showed them, well, what are you doing? I started helping them. And of course, as an entrepreneur, you go from mentoring, which is free, to coaching, which is paid. Right. So I said, well, I might as well start a coaching business. And I wrote a book. I wrote a best selling book called Escape the Owner Prison. And I uh, wrote that about kind of my journey through all that stuff and being trapped by my business, uh, meaning that if I didn't open the door, the business didn't run. I could take a week off here and there, maybe two weeks, have to call in every other day. The check. I had people working for me, but I really hadn't put the business together the way it needed to be. It wasn't systemized. It wasn't self running. I didn't have people with authority in there, right? I just kind of let them do the work and made sure they did it. So that wasn't a really good plan. So, uh, you know, part two became let's do this so it can run itself, so I can have freedom. I can be with my family. We wanted to homeschool our kids all the way through and everything else. They were just starting to get to that age. So I made that happen. And again, by doing that, I, I figured I saw these patterns that most businesses suffer from. And that's a start, Chris, the first two years, and you got to work really hard, right? You got to figure everything out. You're going to wear nine hats. You're going to roll through this thing. And there's no getting around that. There's no magic pill that isn't work when you start a new business. So we get that. But the problem is, next thing you know, 10 years has gone by, and you've repeated the first two five times. And that's why you're stuck. You've never been able to scale. You've never been able to delegate. Never been able to automate. And you're kind of stuck doing all the work. So I started really recognizing that pattern, and that's when I came in with my tactical and strategic uh, solutions, and really started turning these businesses around. Not turning them around in the sense that I started giving them freedom, right? I started getting those owners where they could delegate properly, and people could take that delegation, and actually run with it, and do well, not just tell someone to do do something and have them figure it out. Right. So once that all got dialed in, we started just seeing lives changed in the as as a business owner. Because we all get into business for freedom, right? To control our time, to make more money, to make impact. Right. So my whole big movement now is helping ten thousand business owners create freedom, profit, and impact in their business. And that kind of brings us up to where we're at today. Yeah, really great introduction. And um, because you alluded to a lot of different things. And so, you know, the first thing was um what do you mean by um, owner prison and um, how do you escape that? Yeah, so the owner prison is like this. So you begin and you're doing everything because you have to. But the problem is if you're not able to create systems in your business, duplicatable processes that you can put people into so they can run with the ball, right? You don't have to micromanage them. You don't have to stand over. You have to check every time they do it because they don't really know how to do it your way. Uh, that's the prison. You can never, you can't leave for a month and not call in because the place will burn down, right? You're just, uh, you know, it's going to be crazy. You'll have nothing left when you come back. So a lot of people get in that. Now they're making money, but they just can't break away. They feel, the problem, Chris, is they feel that the business will only run with them. Only they can do it the best. That's the big thing. And, it's, and I get it like you're really good. I make the assumption with every owner I work with, you are the best at what you do. It's just an assumption I have. You better be the best because that's really who I work with is the best. But if someone can do it 95 or 97% as good as you, your customers will not know the difference. Okay. That's the first step. So turn that person loose, 
and then train them up the next five to three percent, right? What do they need to do to be as good as you? Because you're not a unicorn. You're not the only guy who can do it the greatest. So have some confidence in your own ability to teach someone and their skills and let them do it because that's where your freedom will come from. It's really awesome when it happens. And, uh, you know, follow interesting is, uh, you know, follow up question because, you know, what you're alluded to is um, working on the business versus working in the business. This is the e myth. Um, so the other question I have for you is because um, I'm going to, I want to expand upon, um, you know, you talked about systems and processes, but earlier on you said there are certain patterns that, um, owners fall into that cause them to um, get stuck? What are those patterns? So they have a fear of hiring because I don't have the money. That's always, I can't afford anybody, right? So that's a big one. And that holds them back, man. That slows growth like no one's business. That is probably the number one thing that traps you in your business, right? They also never get help. And I mean by help is whether that's a coach or get good counsel around them. Do you have any people who have been where you're going who, and us, when we become successful, just like you're doing this podcast, Chris, we share with others. We'll help you. If you're an entrepreneur trying to come up, I help a lot of people. I love to see them get started. I love to, let me help you get going. So they're there. I never asked for help my first 20 years. I mean, I had billionaire clients give me advice. And I'm like, what do you know? You don't build water features. I build water features, you know, and just, they were right about everything. And I, you know, the whole thing collapsed and cause I'm an idiot. Okay. I was just, I worked twice as hard and it took twice as long. I got there, but really not, I really didn't get there. Right. And, and if you get help, you can compress time, right? You can stop making the bad decisions, costing mistakes, right? You can start doing the, you can stop doing the dumb things that you realize right after you do them, that was really dumb, but it cost me five grand. Right. So, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So, so you, the, the patterns, they never ask for help. They don't know how to hire. Okay. They don't have the budget because they haven't been pricing properly. So another yeah. thing is they, they never price correctly. Never, never, never do they price correctly because they want to get work. Right. And I understand that. And, and I'm, a, I can be a little harsh. I'll say, well, that's great if you're 14. Okay. And you're pushing a lawnmower. That's great. Go hustle and take, take, you know, get, get, get some grass to cut from the big guy. You know, that's, that's all good. But you, you know, we're an adult here. You do, you, you build again. My assumption is you're great at what you do. So you build or provide great service or great product. So you need to understand your value and drive the value of that product with your sales. Don't sell by number. Don't sell by price. That's a race to the bottom. You'll destroy your business. You'll never get out of that trap. It ends up cost, costing you your business. It really does if you don't price properly. So those are a few of the main things that you'll see over and over again. It reminds me, because um, when I was in uh, training, you know, I trained through the financial crisis. I trained through COVID. And it was interesting was, um, you know, these hospitals that are struggling and they cut their like budgets, like marketing, advertising, a lot of companies and, you know, one interesting thing I heard was like someone was saying like during these times, these businesses, they should double down on their marketing. And, you know, so it's kind of the counterintuitive thing to do. Um, so the other question I have for you is because, you know, in the kind of traditional method, you had, um, you had uh, processes and, um, you know, building a team, a lot of it was people dependent. So what sort of, um, systems and processes these days is software and artificial intelligence versus actual people. Um, Cause uh, you know, I've, you know, I've got soft, I've mostly my systems and processes are software now. Right. I think it's really important. That, and this is another thing when you're trapped in the owner prison, it's hard to look forward. You're not seeing, you know, you, the, when you hear about AI, you're going to think Terminator and it's the end of the world. Okay. <laughs> now, it could go that way. There's a lot of propensity for evil, but there's also a lot of good things we can use it for, right? So we there's three things you do in your business. Automate, delegate, and eliminate, okay? Automate, that's what you're talking about. There's so many opportunities in a lot of different ways, not just AI for writing emails or getting good subject lines or tracking numbers or doing whatever, right? You've got, you've got a lot, you have virtual assistants. You can hire someone who's perfectly qualified 
speaks great English, lives in the Philippines. You pay him $6 an hour and you can get that 24 seven, right? Now you don't have that in-house person who's going to call in sick and accept, you know, the whole, the whole people experience. And I'm not saying we need to eliminate people altogether, but there's a lot of stuff you do in your business that you can, you can, you can farm out. Right. And that's what you want to do. And then delegate is really important too. like I was saying a little bit earlier, but you have to be prepared to delegate. You don't just get someone and tell them to do something. They have to have a, a detailed lane to run in so they know how to succeed. What does success look like? How can they, when you give them the ball, how can they run for the goal line, right? That's what we want to do. And then the elimination part is great. We want to eliminate cost overruns, redundancies, right? Things like that. But you also want to eliminate you, okay? You want to, you want to eliminate what you're doing in the business. You want to be able to focus on what we call your 5%. That's the 5% of the business only you can do. Visionary stuff, bringing in the big clients, right? Doing that kind of, understand the growth, where you're going to go, market share, stuff like that. That's what you're looking at AI. What can I use in my company that's coming down the pike? Because now you have the bandwidth to do that. You have the mind space, right? So th those are some of the things. Yeah. Very, like, I was, uh, I was joking with my friend the other day. We were like, yeah, uh, AI and, you know, software can run 24 seven. It's like basically a fixed cost. Um, and, uh, we can, you know, productivity, efficient, very efficient. And like, when you have people, you have to deal with, you know, fights with your spouse or your other mm -hmm. and others, you know, uh, take your kid to the doctor, you know, all this other stuff, which, um, which is uh, interesting. Um, so next question is, um, cause you, how has the, um, mindset in business, uh, especially with being in the Marine Corps, there's a good talk about the good, how it's helped you in business as well as some of the, um, kind of, um, cause you know, the army's very regimented and sometimes business, you have to be flexible. Talk about right. the mindset that's um, helped you. Yeah. So the Marine Corps, the big thing, what we're about is mission accomplishment. All right. So we're not into failing. All right. So you kind of get that. You learn how to do whatever it takes to, to achieve the mission, right. To accomplish that. Um, no matter how grueling, no matter how long it takes, you'll get it done, right. Whatever the cost. So I kind of took that with me, not kind of, I guess I did. I kind of had it. They enhanced it. That's a big part of what I, I, I took with me to get things done. Now you're right about the flexibility aspect. Like, the Marine Corps is a little different than other branches because we're about adaptability. Not that they're not, but that's one of our prime directives. You adapt and overcome. Okay. Because everything is screwed up all the time. Okay. No battle plan ever survives the first shot. Okay. It's like that, that goes for anybody. Okay. So if you understand that you, you better have contingencies ready. You better be able to think on the fly. You have to do that to adapt. And business is like, uh, worse than war. I call it the endless war. Business is the endless war. You're at battle all the time. That's why we're honing entrepreneurial warriors on the battlefield of business. That's what we do as a, a coaching company, right? We get these guys ready to get in it every day and mix it up because you have to. And that flexibility and adaptability is critical. So I think I got all three. I really got that that dialed in well for me from the core. Um, and then you get out, sometimes you don't even know it. Then all of a sudden you realize, well, this is the same thing. It's just business. So we started doing it that way. And that's really helped Plus, But the other side, you said the negative side, like I said, I'm a little thick and didn't ask for help. Okay. You got that part too. Okay. Get it done no matter what. And you're probably going to be by yourself. Okay. <laughs> There's only one of you left. You're still going to. Okay. So I'm that like this, this is, you know, I'm, I'm the one, the one man guy. Um, so that was not so good. And that was more in probably my own head, my own philosophy. Um, it was ego driven. It was pride driven. It really was. So here's a warning. Take your ego and take your pride and lock it in the proverbial box. Okay. Humble yourself. Get surrounded with wise counsel. Okay. Ask for help. Hire the coach. Spend the money early to save yourself a ton of time so you can get to success that much faster. Yeah. Really, this very, and then, you know, I, cause I really, a lot of the, entrepreneurs on this podcast they've had a military background and it's um especially when it comes to like you know training your mind and your body it's really uh, a lot of entrepreneurs they really put a lot of focus into their sleep and their emotional mental health mm -hmm. so that they can perform at their peak so i love really i love this and kind of talk about um you know uh you know 
giving back and how you balance like family and your relationships and kind of business as not just to accumulate and just but actually to kind of help right. people and solve problems. Yeah. So here's the thing. So we talk about getting trapped in owner prison. We got a hot mess in our business, right? We got to do everything. We can't scale. We can't get the time, right? Okay. But then someone walks up to you and says, oh, you know what you need? You know what you need, Chris? You need work-life balance. <laughs> and then they then then they walk away from you. Like they just said some lofty, you know, they just enlightened you, right? And you're going, yeah, you want to tell me how to do that? And they don't tell you because they don't have a clue, okay? They don't have a clue. They just it's a catch little thing people say. So, but guess what? I have clues, okay? I can tell you how to do it. All right. Then the first thing you have to do, and it's called the five F's, okay? Balance comes from the five F's. It's faith, family, finances, fitness, and friendships. Those five F's are what going to give you your work-life balance. But here's the problem. If your business is a hot mess, taking all your time and everything else, you can't address the five F's. You have to mm -hmm. fix your business first. Get that dialed in. And then when you have the margin, the margin of time, then you go work on your faith, work on your family, work on your finances, work on your fitness, work on your friends, right? Now you can do that, but don't think you got this crazy business that's taking 80 hours a week, and then you're going to add those five things on top of that. It's impossible, <laughs> okay? But the little guy who said work like you need work-life balance, they think you can do it. They've never yeah. done it, but they think you can do it. So you can't do it, okay? Fix your business because that's your income generator. That's how you live. You know, don't quit your business, go get a job so you can work on the five Fs. That's ridiculous because you're an entrepreneur. You're made to do this. You built this business. All you have to do is correct it, systemize it, get it going. Then you have the life of your dreams. Then you can work on those five Fs because – Faith, that's, everyone's got their level of faith, right? Wherever they're at on that. That's great. That's a big thing. Family is next, right? Now, in my order, it's it's my wife and I, then our six kids. Okay, we come first. Okay, the kids don't come before my wife and I. Okay, we had to fix that. Like, nope, nope, nope. And you know what that looks like. Here's an example. My wife and I have a nice little conversation at the table. My son, Augustine, comes up. Hey, hey, mom, mom, can I do it? And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, you don't interrupt us. You hold on. When we finish talking to each other, you can ask if you can speak. Okay? Like, you have to put that priority in that this relationship is important. We're the mother and father. Teach them a little respect, but also understand the the uh, the rank, right? This is what it is. You wouldn't do that, whether it's in the and I'm not saying it's military, but you have to you have to create that, right? So because they're going to have to do it when they get married and everything else and have kids, right? So that's a big thing there. But then we get into finances, critical, right? That's the number one cause of divorce, right? right? So think about that. Now add a messed up business. Okay, like like you you're working all the time to keep that going and you can't get time away and you're not really watching your finances because you're like paying everybody else first, you're paying yourself last because that's what you think you're supposed to do. You're making these sacrifices for the good of the company. Yeah, your wife's probably not too thrilled about that. Okay. So it's or your husband, whatever direction is going, I'm telling you, it doesn't work. So that that's gonna crush, crush relationship. So you're gonna hope the kids come and break the conversation because it's just gonna be about money all the time. Okay, so you're going to hope they interject just to break, you know, break the tension. Okay, so you got to get that dialed in. So remember, I always tell people, anything you don't pay attention to goes away. Okay, mm -hmm. this is, that includes your wife or husband, that includes your money, and it can even include your children. Right, you have to pay attention to stuff. So get that dialed in, then we go into fitness. Okay, fitness and health, fitness and nutrition. This is a really, really important factor that and I've been victim of. Right? I've always worked out Marine. I'm a champion boxer. I'm a black belt. I do all this stuff. You know, I train people and it's all good. But I've had times where the business got so stressful, I'm getting three window, three meals from a window. You know, just you know, yes. give, give me the next thing, you know, and, and all of a sudden I'm a 300 pound land tuna. You know, I'm just, just I'm like, what happened to me? Start working out again, get back. But it, again, it's stress. It's the business. It's, all this other stuff, but you've got to focus on the nutrition and the health, okay, and the fitness. Yeah. You really got to, because yes, it keeps your mind sharp, but physically you can move, you can operate, you've got the energy, the alertness. And that's probably, you got to make your workout a routine. It's 
got to be four or five days a week. It has to be. We have a saying, if you're not fit, you're not fit to lead. And it hurts people's feelings, but it's just the way it is, okay? I mean, if, if, you, if, if you got two people, one guy's obese and one guy's lean and mean, and you're asked to follow one of them, which one are you going to follow? Okay, yeah. <laughs> we, all know, we all know the answer, right? We don't have to say it. We all know what the answer is. So and I'm not saying you have to be an Adonis and spend all this time being narcissistic in the gym. What I'm saying is have energy, be able to do things. See, my philosophy is, can you do for two? If I had to grab my son and carry him down two flights of stairs and a half mile down the road, can I do that? Or am I going to have a have a grabber and die at the bottom of the stairs? Okay, because I'm unfit. Yeah. So I have to also provide and protect my family as, you know, that's my role. So I got to maintain fitness and skills. I keep all my skills up. I box, I do all that stuff. So today I love it. So part two of that is the nutrition. You can't out train a bad diet, right? So what, whatever you're stuffing in your pie hole, okay, this is, this is where it happens. It happens with what you eat because you can work out all you want. It's not going to matter. So just start making the little changes, start getting more whole food. A friend of mine, Chris had a great he coined this phrase. He made this thing up. It was the funniest thing I ever heard. We were talking about it. He goes, well, I just do the green face diet. I go, the green face diet? What's that? He goes, well, if it didn't grow, like it wasn't green or I had a face, I don't eat it. <laughs> okay. You know, so he's not getting stuff from boxes and things, you know? So it was kind of funny. So with the green face diet, that's simple to follow, you know, but you can figure out your own way, but really it, it's, a, it's a critical part to leadership, guiding a company, guiding your family, you're the example. Remember, your children, more is caught than taught. They will watch what you do now. You can tell them to eat healthy, but if you're not, they're just going to do what you did. You're the default. Even when they get older, they're going to do what they saw you do. If they saw you being healthy, eating the right thing, and making them like, I make them smoothies, protein shakes, juice. We do fresh extracted juices. I make that for all the kids. I make a half gallon a day for them. You know, everyone's getting in there, run out the door, with, and they taste great. Right. So we just, you build those habits just like you would do for yourself. And then finally, you got friendships. Okay. Now, friendships is a, everyone's got their thing. I'm, I have a very small friend circle. Okay. My joke with my kids, I said, well, if I lost three fingers off this hand, all my friends could still fit on it. <laughs> I said, I'm good. You know, I'm good. But I just keep that circle very tight. So I call them my trench buddies. Guys always have my six, no matter what they're going to be there for me. So that's always going to be a small number. Now I have other circles. I have other friends, acquaintances, networks, things like that, because that's business and that's life. And I do that. But the people who really are close, who have the number, can contact me whenever. That, that's a very small number of people. So, But you want to be able to at least cultivate that. A lot of times an entrepreneur, you're trapped on your island all by yourself because entrepreneurship's lonely. So that's the, that's the five Fs. How about that? Yeah. Really fascinating. Just it reminds me of um, you know take advice from people that are have done what you are doing, and because I know I know I mean I know colleagues. Some of my colleagues, they're like you know their nutrition is not the best, and you know some of them are smokers and alcoholics, and they're telling patients not to smoke and drink, and so it's kind of it's like yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, it's, one ear out the other. There's oh. a big debate you'll see on on things. They'll talk about trainers, you know, personal trainers, fitness trainers. Can they be fat or they got to be super fat? Doesn't matter. And it's you, you can't believe the battles between the two. Okay, well, this is a knowledge they know, and this and this, but they're a slob. Okay, <laughs> they don't do what they, you have to do what you teach. Okay, that's coaching in general, I think. And business coach, whether it's business coaching or health coaching, you have to do what you teach. If you don't do it, you don't live it. Come on, there's, there's just a, there's a loss of legitimacy there. You know, it's hard to be an authority or a leader when you can't live what you're speaking. Yeah. How can people find you and reach out to you and find out what more about you? Sharpenthespiritcoaching.com. Best place to go. One-stop shop, sharpenthespiritcoaching.com. And I'll tell you what, Chris, let's do this for your audience. If they want a copy of Escape the Owner Prison, you can see it, the audio version. Okay, I'll give them a free audio version. If they go to my website, sharpenspearcoaching.com, go to my contact, send me a one sentence email. Say, Richard, saw you on Chris's show. Love to get a copy of the free audio book. Done, I'll send it to you. Okay, just because yeah. they're your listeners. Okay, so they get that. And here's the best part they get to hear me speak for two and a half more hours as I read the book to them. See, so the, the benefits are endless. 
Yeah. Awesome. And uh, for all the listeners, I direct you to check out Richard's socials, give him a like and follow. Email will be in the uh, show notes so you can check out the uh, free audiobook. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Chris. This was great. I had a lot of